started. Um, so, I want to introduce, uh, I'm, I'm uh, Karen O'Donohue, I'm from the education team here at the IETF, uh, as, as is Rich Sahls, uh, he, is, he and I are currently co-chairing the edu team. <laughs> um, and uh, we offer a series of tutorials, we also do the newcomers overview, the newcomers uh, feedback session on Thursday morning, uh, and we do a number of other things as well. So, um, uh, there's two things I'd like to ask of you. Uh, uh, at the end of this, there's going to be a link to a survey. We really are interested in your feedback uh, on this particular tutorial itself. And then towards the end of the week, we're interested in any feedback you have on things that we can do to make your experience uh, here at the IETF better. Um, there is a mailing list, edu-team at ietf.org. Uh, it's in one of the slides. You'll see it as it comes through. Uh, so we welcome your feedback there as well. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce our two speakers for today. Um, providing the newcomers overview, we have Anshal Maharti from Boston University. I'm fairly certain I mispronounced her last name because she's always been just Anshal to me. But <laughs> as I turned to her, I was like, oh, I just realized I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but you can fix it. Uh, and Rich Sahls from Akamai. So uh, I hope you all enjoy this, and I'll talk to you later. More folks coming in, so that's good. Um, <laughs> um, hello, everyone. I'm Anshul Malhotra from Boston University. Um, I'm a PhD student there, um, and uh, my research basically focuses on the security of internet protocols. And here at IETF, I am involved with several working groups, uh, primarily with the NTP working group. Um, and other security groups. Uh, this is, I guess, my 10th ITF now, 10th or 12th. Well, I've enjoyed every single bit of it, and I hope that you guys too. So let's get you all started. First of all, I have a question. Uh, can I see a show of hands for those who are um, newcomers here? And by newcomers, I mean uh, those who have attended up to five meetings. OK. Most of you. And who are the first timers? Like the very first? OK. <laughs> well, that should have been my first question, I guess. Uh, great. So most of you have not attended this um, in-person newcomers tutorials. And maybe some of you have attended. Any of you have attended the webinars that happened before? Great. OK. Cool. So today we are going to um, equip equip you with a lot of information so that you can have a better week here. Um, first of all, welcome to Montreal. It's a beautiful city. Do explore it. Um, I would like to thank um, um, Brad and Mike for drafting uh, this presentation. Um, a lot of other people have after works worked on it. Um, um, so I'm sure, I haven't met them personally, but I'm sure they are great people. They have done a great job. You'll see that. Um, so first of all, uh, this and the following slide, these are the IETF note well slide. As the name suggests, it's a note well slide, so you better note it well. Um, you're going to see this slide a lot of times um, during this entire week. Um, specifically before every working group session, and we'll talk about what working groups are and what working group sessions are, but you're going to see this slide. This slide is basically, it applies to all the IETF participation, whether you are participating in person or remotely. It basically reminds you um, that all the participants of the IETF agrees to abide by the IETF policies on various topics. Uh, I don't expect you to read this uh, whole um, thing right now, but it's important that you read it uh, before uh, any sort of participation at ITF. Uh, this is again the continuation of the IETF note, note well slide. Uh, these are different BCPs, that is um, best common pra current practices documents, which, which are the RFCs, and uh, they have like details on several topics um, that ITF, IETF has policies on and that uh, you as an ITF participant uh, would agree to abide by. 
Uh, there is BCP for standards processes, uh, working group processes where the most of the work of IETF happens. Then there are policies for anti-harassment, code of conduct, patents and copyright. Um, and then most recently there is a BCP on privacy policy that is about the uh, that how IETF handles all the information that you provide uh, to IETF. So um, if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, you should go through all these uh, BCPs. Okay. So here at ITF, we try to uh, provide you with um, all the necessary information and resources that are necessary for you to get started for this week and uh, get integrated into the community. So there are a lot of newcomers activities that are organized um, at every ITF meeting. So before this newcomers tutorial, there were uh, webinars for the newcomers. And today, this is the newcomers tutorial. You're here. It's from 12.30 to 1.30. Um, the next newcomers event is the IETF Quick Connections. That's also today at 4 PM. Um, it requires a pre-registration. Uh, there's a newcomers IT, IETF newcomers page. Uh, there's a link there. You can go there and register yourself. It's a limited space event, so it's better that you register early. Uh, this event is basically here. You'll meet uh, the IETF leadership, so you can um, have. Uh, it's a very efficient way to meet the working group chairs, area directors, mentors, and other leaders, other um, veterans at the IETF, and. Ming Yes. It's no longer accepting registrations. I tried about 20 minutes ago. Is it? Okay, okay maybe it closed. Uh, I, as I told, it's a limited space event, so probably it's full. Um, I think you can still probably go. Uh, that's fine. If you don't feel comfortable trying to crash into it um, during the reception, <laughs> people will have name badges on. It. Just feel free to go up and talk to folks. I'm sure there's some way to get in. Um, so yeah, you can have short one-to-one -one conversations with the experienced ITFers there. Um, it'll be a good start of the week. You can ask queries if you want, if you're inter interested in s certain specific topic. You can go ask them. Um, yeah, it will give you a good kickoff for the for surviving the rest of the week. Um, and also, it's not a formal event. There will be no speeches or presentations. It's a very laid back and informal event. There will be beer, there will be wine, there will be soda, there will be some snacks. So I suggest you should go there. Um, OK, so this is uh, in the evening today. Then there is this ITF Guides Mentoring Program. It it was known as ITF mentoring program earlier, but now it's in. So basically, you're assigned a guide. I, uh, may I know who, uh, who, uh, um, how many people have uh, an, a mentor assigned already? OK, very few people, actually. Um, I would suggest, highly suggest, that you should uh, go ask for a mentor. Um, that will help. Like, It's super easy to. Uh, ask questions, any specific questions. They will also guide you and um, guide you through, like, tell you all about ITF and guide you to how to meet new people, how to approach different uh, working groups, uh, working group sessions, how, or like, which working group session is happening when. There are several parallel tracks going on at the same time. I mean, they can, they can be very useful um, for answering any questions. So you should have a guide um, assigned to yourself. Um, then there is this newcomers dinner. It's not an official event. It is organized by a secretariat. Um, and you have to pay, um, I guess, $25 for that, this dinner. So if you're interested, you can uh, register yourself and pay for this dinner. It's a newcomers only dinner. Uh, it's also a mingling event, networking event. You can uh, meet with um, ITFers and other newcomers here. Uh, then towards the end of the week, that is on Thursday, we have an early morning newcomers feedback session. We are really interested in knowing um, what you feel about all these initiatives and all these activities that we have organized and how did it help or did not help you get through the week? How do you feel about it? And what are the other things that you would like to include um, and that would help 
uh, newcomers. So this is really important. And then as Karen mentioned, there is a survey form that we would like you to uh, fill up uh, to get the feedback. All right, so this is almost about the newcomers' activities. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk about the scope of this tutorial, like what you should and should not expect from what we are going to talk about today. So this presentation basically uh, is focused on uh, providing you with the information and resources that are immediately useful to you um, as you are attending your first meeting. Uh, it'll give you a kick off, uh, a, a start, a good start for the meeting um, for this entire week. And we'll also talk about some of the strategies to how to approach people and um, make new connections, or whether you're, um, well, all of you are here in person. So um, yeah, this is uh, almost what we will talk about in this meeting. We'll also provide some key, uh, some uh, information about key people and resources towards the, uh, towards the end of the presentation. What this present, but this is not all about IETF. IETF is much, much uh, broader than what we are going to talk about today in this tutorial. So this presentation does not really include, uh, I'm not gonna talk about the history of the IETF or how to write standards documents and the process of standardization. Um, and there are several other things, but we will, um, but there is this link uh, to the YouTube channel where you can find more information about all, this, um, all these topics. Okay, and the next, uh, any, any questions so far? Okay, so in this section now, I'm going to talk about a little bit about what IETF is and um, its related organizations um, and processes. So first off, what is the mission of IETF? The mission of the IETF is to make the internet work better by producing high quality, relevant technical documents that influence the way people design, use, and manage the internet. So basically what we are trying to do here is to develop and maintain the standard technologies um, to provide service in the internet. So we want to make sure, we want to ensure that the technology that we provide here at IETF um, provides the necessary functionality. We also want to make sure that the technology is uh, easily and efficiently deployable. We also want this technology, we want to make sure that the technology is scalable at both the de deployment as well as the usage level. And we also want to make sure that the technology that we deploy is secure in itself as well as the, at the operational level. So basically, um, the mission of IETF, in a nutshell, is to make the internet work better by writing high quality internet standards documents. So IETF, it's a standards development organization. There are several other STOs, but IETF is different from these SDOs in, um, in a lot of aspects. So IETF is basically a voluntary-based uh, it, organization. It's a, it's a self-selected individual participation. There is no formal membership, unlike other STOs. Anybody can come willingly and join, and anybody can go whenever they wish to. Another important uh, and very unique feature of IETF is that to reach a consensus, we do not follow a formal vo voting procedure. What we do instead is a hum, and we'll talk about it uh, later in this presentation. But unlike, uh, the important point here is that unlike other standards organization where voting is the main, uh, main uh, way of uh, reaching a consensus, here we do not believe in a formal voting process. Additionally, uh, ITF does not have any formal government or a government role or any um, private corporations rule. It's a very individual based, um, individual participation based organization. Um, another important and unique factor is that the standards that we develop or write here are not mandated. We don't mandate standards on people. Uh, it's mostly, the standardization is mostly driven by market based adoption. So if people think that uh, a standard uh, technology is useful, they would 
read it, they would deploy it and see if it works. And that's how um, a specification becomes a standard, when people actually think that it is useful and it is deployed. Uh, so that's how um, it's kind of a bottoms up approach as opposed to going from standardization to adoption. We believe in going from adoption to standardization. So it's a very uh, market uh, adoption based um, uh, process. Uh, at ITF, we are primarily focused on um, improving the internet, working on internet technologies. That is where the focus is and that is where we think our expertise is, as opposed to other organizations where, where they are involved with several other things like other processes um, and parts of internet, uh, improving the internet. But here at ITF, our core focus is on working on the internet technologies that provide service. And as I said, this is a very bottoms up approach as opposed to a top down approach, which is pretty unique compared to other STOs. All right, so this is really interesting. Uh, if you're uh, here for technology, then you should definitely look at these, uh, the slide and uh, dig deeper into all these areas. So the work of IETF is organized into working groups. The, the, those are the workhorse of um, IETF, you can say. And um, ITF groups these working groups into these groups. All right, so there are currently seven um, uh, areas, broad areas, uh, and the working groups fall under one of these areas. Uh, these areas are mostly dynamic. Uh, we form one if we feel we need another area, and we can collapse one if we don't need um, any more working groups under that area. Um, so currently there are these seven working groups. Uh, I'll not get into details of these groups, but the names are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, each of these uh, areas have one or two area directors who take care of um, coordination between the working groups that are uh, a part of these areas and see if they are performing the necessary functions that are required for a particular working group. Uh, these area directors are appointed by NOMCOM, that is the nomination committee, um, typically for a period of two years. So the area directors take care of these um, areas and then under these areas there are working groups which are specific to some specific problem that they're trying to solve in the internet and these working groups have chairs um, who um, are present here in person and then um, they organize working groups at the IETF. Um, okay, so the IETF and consensus. This is a very, very unique feature here at IETF. As I said, IETF does not believe in a majority rule philosophy. So the IETF mantra, we reject kings, precedents, and voting. We believe in rough consensus and running code. So how do we achieve rough consensus? As I said, voting is one option, but that doesn't really resonate well with the idea, with the mantra of IETF and the people here. So whenever um, in a working group session, uh, the working group chair wants to know the temperature of the room on a certain topic or how many people agree to something or disagree, what they usually do is instead of a show of hands or um, a voting process, they ask people in the room to hum, like hmm, hum, <laughs> for or against a topic. And uh, when people do that, um, the working group chair is responsible for judging uh, basically uh, the, the weight of yes or no. Uh, it doesn't tell anything unequivocally, like what is the real uh, decision, but it just gives an idea of where on the spectrum of completely acceptable to completely unacceptable people in the room are. It's really interesting. Uh, so then, um, yeah, so then the working group chair is responsible for deciding whether we are going for or against. Um, and it's not decided on the spot, like um, this decision is then taking, uh, this issue or topic is then taken over to the mailing list and it has continued there. This is, this is basically to accommodate those people who could not attend, uh, the, who were not present there in person, and then the whole process, not the humming, but the entire a discussion is taken to the mailing list and um, then uh, we reach um, judgment. 
So that's, um, that's the way how we reach rough consensus. And there's this really interesting, uh, if you're interested, you should go read RFC 7282 that describes the whole history of why we follow uh, and how it all started, uh, the humming process. Another important thing is that, uh, about rough consensus, is that everybody's voice is heard and um, addressed, but not necessarily accommodated. So not one person's dissenting opinion can control reaching us a judgment. It's a rough consensus. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about ITF culture. As I said, it's a very, um, it's an individual voluntary based uh, participation. So the people who are here are very, very passionate and they are motivated and self-driven. They're smart people, they are very vocal about their opinions. So if you hear people in the hallway yelling at each other, don't get scared. It's just the way they are. They are trying to reach, uh, reach a good solution, trying to hear each other. Also, you should uh, keep in mind that these people, some of these people uh, have been coming to these IETFs for like last 20 years. They know each other really well. They know how to talk to each other. They know their ways. So don't get scared off. If you, are, if you want to, if you're interested in talking to someone, just go there, introduce yourself, talk to them. It'll be all fine. You'll be accommodated. Don't worry about it. Another thing is technical, technical excellence and topical knowledge is highly valued. So I would suggest if you are attending some working group sessions, uh, make sure that you have read the relevant documents. Um, and if you say something smart and technical, people would, you know, you'll, you'll be accommodated. Uh, you'll, be, you'll be heard. Um, and that says um, a lot about ITF culture. We are very, it's, it's, it's pretty informal, like, it's very friendly. Um, just like ITF culture, the dress code is also very informal. People mostly here like to wear t-shirts. Um, well, I'm in a little bit of formal attire here today. That's not how I am normally. Uh, but if that's your way, go for it. Whatever you want to do, you want to wear informals, formals, um, it's all acceptable here. Um, yeah, and as I said, People have been coming here for a very long time. They have close working relationships with each other and people know each other very well at both personal as well as professional level. So it's a, it's a very, um, uh, very friendly environment. Yes, okay. This is, yes, this is interesting. So as a newcomer here in this week, you're going to get a lot of acronyms. I would suggest do not pay attention, too much attention to all of them. A little bit is fine. If you're working, uh, if you're interested in the, mostly interested in the technical thing, the slide, previous slide uh, on the technical areas, you should dig deeper into it. And these, um, these will, you'll get these uh, different working and moving parts of IETF that makes this entire organization work gradually as you start attending more meetings and um, getting more involved in the administrative stuff. Uh, but just to give you an overview about uh, different, um, different moving parts of IETF, there are several uh, groups. The first one here is IESG, Internet Engineering Steering Group. Um, this group is basically for the technical administration of the IETF. Uh, it is also the one who finally approves uh, the specifications to becoming the um, RFC standards. Uh, then there is IRTF, Internet Research Task Force. This organization is, uh, uh, this group is basically focused on longer term research areas, uh, research topics uh, in the internet, as opposed to its parallel organization, ITF, which is focused more on the immediate engineering and standardization processes. So IRTF is more research, long term research focused groups. For instance, there is CFRG group, that is the Crypto Forum Research Group. Uh, that provide guidelines on the on adoption of emerging crypto technologies. Then there is really interesting HPRC, which is the uh, HRPC, that's Human Rights Protocol Consideration Group, um, which considers um, how standards and protocols that we develop here 
could um, could enable, strengthen, or um, weaken human rights. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, you should go attend. I think the meeting is on Friday. Uh, it's really interesting. And apart from these, there are several other research groups that are. Um, uh, not all of the research group meetings happen every IETF, but a few of subset of them um, sure uh, happen uh, at um, different IETF meetings throughout the year. Then there is this Internet Ar Architecture Board uh, that provides an oversight for the technical technical requirements of the in uh, of the internet. So um, they are also involved in. Um, writing RFCs and standards. Uh, the Internet Architecture Board, recently there was a workshop organized by, I'm not sure if it was organized by IAB. Yeah, yeah. web packaging. Yes. Yes, so. Yesterday. Yeah. Well, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. So, yeah, there was this web packaging um, workshop organized by IAB. Um, and the IETF LLC, as the name uh, suggests, it's mostly involved with the administrative and management work um, at IETF. Um, you can read more about it. There are uh, resources available um, if you're interested in getting more insight into how the administration of IETF works. But for now, don't get lost into this alphabet soup. Okay, so this was the slide that I was talking about, basically. Well, do you want to yeah. continue? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about the week that started yesterday, continuing through today and running until Friday. Um, this is sort of the most pragmatic advice. Um, the agenda, you, if you've all registered, you've gotten a copy, uh, either, you know, links, on, links online to the agenda. There is also uh, an agenda app for Android and iPhone. Um, uh, sometimes they have little printouts and, and fanfold paper that are worth doing. Um, there are about 130 working groups in the IETF, as Anchal mentioned. They are the unit of work within the IETF, the people that do things. Um, about 80 of them are meeting this week. Um, there's also what's called birds of a feather. It's from the English or American phrase, birds of a feather flock together, meaning like-minded individuals. Um, and this, this is the step before an actual working group is formed. So there'll be announcements, and there are announcements, and things are in the agenda about BOFs for various topics. Um, they may be, it's called working group forming, meaning, meaning the intent is we want to end up with a working group um, that then has to get approved by the area directors, um, or we just want to get together and see if there's interest. They, a BOF might meet once or twice, for example. Um, ANRW, oh, the IRTF is meeting also. Um, there's about 15 sessions. It's actually, you can consider it to be part of the IETF meetings. Um, they're in the agenda. You can just go and show up. Um, there, a lot of the terminology and workflow is very similar. Um, instead of talking about a working group, there's a research group. Instead of talking about an internet draft or, or a, an RFC, there's research documents. Um, and as Anshal mentioned, some of them are very focused on sort of being the advanced R&D group of the IETF, and some are focused on being more social oriented. There's one, for example, the largest scale one I know of is called uh, Global Access to the Internet for All, Gaia. Um, how do we get the internet? everywhere. Um, there's the Applied Networking Research Group. This is uh, an ACM-affiliated organization. Uh, it's meeting all day tomorrow. I think registration is still open for that. It obviously conflicts with working group meetings that are tomorrow, like two that I'm chairing, so I can't go, unfortunately. Um, there is also plenaries, um, two this year, one right after the other, a technical one and the administrative one, the paper pushing. Uh, there's an invited lunch talks. There's the tutorial program, which you're part of here. There's a follow-on, another tutorial about how to write security considerations about 30 minutes after this one. There's a social event. Uh, there's a mailing list for IETF 105 attendees. You're probably, when you registered, you may have 
signed up or not signed up for that list. Um, one of the most common uses of the mailing list is, hey, does anybody have a spare social ticket? <laughs> Especially as it gets close to the event. Um, there's a hot RFC, which is request for comments um, or re request for conversation. Um, this is people who say, well, I don't even know if this is a working group idea, but here is, you know, some research that I've been working on or something I've been thinking about. They talk for 10 minutes and see maybe there's interest. Um, I've had a number of people, I've volunteered them from the hot RFC to come talk at, say, ACME or other working groups. Uh, we're trying an experiment. Uh, with this meeting, the first hour of every day is set aside for side meetings. Um, one of those, I guess, is the newcomer's debriefing, although that's before the side meeting, um, just to get together and talk with people that you've met during the week and so on. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, meant, I think that comes later. There's also uh, Tuesday, right? Monday. M Monday morning is the I IETF Sisters breakfast. Um, you can see at 8, you can see Anshal to sign up for that if you want. Anybody who identifies as female is welcome to come to that. It's a support organization for women within the ITF. <clears throat> and there's a slide and a picture coming up. Uh, there's a lot of activities not on the agenda. Hallway meetings, bar boffs. That's where it's like, hey, let's go talk about network disk drive access, things like Dropbox and Google Drive and so on. And they go off to a bar and talk. Right? Marathon editing sessions. We're trying to resolve some nasty issues that the working group has identified. We'll just get together in a closed room or you know, there's little breakout rooms throughout and do that. We have an app, the agenda, as I mentioned. Working group sessions are the main point. That's sort of the justification why most of us are here. Not everybody, but most of us. Uh, work is officially, and the ITF work is officially done on mailing lists. Um, the meetings face-to-face -face are to talk about what's happened since the last face-to-face -face meeting, what the open issues are. The quick, no, the H2, one of those two working groups, for example, is only about issues. There's no new work being discussed. That's what their agenda says. Um, the sessions are all streamed and recorded. This session is being streamed and recorded as well by the fine folks in the back of the room. So you can always, um, it's often worthwhile, there's usually unavoidable conflicts. I really wanted to go to this and that, but they're meeting at the same time. Shortly after the IETF meeting, you can go to the IETF YouTube channel on uh, YouTube duh, and uh, watch the meeting that you didn't see. Birds of a feather I mentioned. Um, here is a poster session, someone presenting at the reception for their birds of a feather, uh, ACME, the certificate, Let's Encrypt Certificate Protocol um, now does 10 million certificates a year and it started, you know, it started up and then there was a BOF and then there was a working group and the RFC was published, you know, six months ago. Um, so they can be very successful. IRTF, it's officially part of one of these alphabet soup organizations that Chantal pointed to. That's Chantal, sorry. Anshal pointed to. I got up very early this morning. Um, <laughs> Sorry, uh, sorry. Um, there's a RFC uh, primer on the difference between the IETF and the IRTF. As I said, they share on purpose a lot of similar terminology um, and they're hosted by the same parent organization. Applied networking research, uh, it's a forum for you know, academics. This is how we bring, are starting to bring more academic involvement and participation in the I, into the IETF. There is also the ANRW Applied Networking Research Prize. Um, it includes a free trip to the IETF and I think $1,000 for the best tech engineering paper, um, networking paper presented in the past year. And that will be presented, I guess, at the plenary. Plenary is a Latin word, it means everybody, which I found out. Um, so this is what the plenary looks like. It'll be held in the, <coughs> pardon me, held in the grand ballroom the same one that the reception is in. There's a dais at the front, and the various leadership teams will cycle through that. I'm on the IAB, you got any questions for the IAB? Okay, next. I'm in the IESG, any questions? Okay, next. I'm the executive director, here's what our budget looks like, next. Um, it's nitty gritty details about how the organization works. This year there's also a separate co-located just before uh, technical plenary, and I don't recall what the topic is. 
but worthwhile. Nothing else is scheduled against the plenaries. Invited lunch talk, the sponsor, um, in this case, uh, NBC Universal Comcast, Comcast, NBC Universal, whatever their thing is, um, they will have a, a speaker, uh, I think, on Thursday. Hackathons and code sprints. So if your first time and you haven't missed it, you sort of missed it now. Uh, the code sprint is where on Saturdays we're smaller group of people develop the website um, that powers all of the workflow for generating RFCs. Hackathons um, are for people just want to get together and discuss, you know, and work on their implementation and make sure they interoperate. Notable successes have been Quick, TLS 1.3. Right now we're doing TEEP and some DNS work. Um, at Later on in the week, there'll be a hackathon happy hour where there'll be a presentation from some of the more successful things in the future. Um, it's sort of free, it's, it's separate registration. They provide uh, nice lunch, table space, and you can just sign up on a wiki for things you are interested in working on um, for the next IETF. Next IETF is November in Singapore, and then after that it's, I think, Vancouver. Social events. So. Um, the picture on the left is from the social in Singapore, the National Aquarium, a really big tank. <laughs> yeah, it's a very big tank. Um, and then one picture on the right is a picture from uh, the sisters' breakfast from London. London. Okay, so 95? Uh, a number of sessions ago. Um, there are also many, many informal sessions. The IETF starts uh, in the morning, we serve a continental breakfast. Many people get the hotel breakfast. Um, there's the side meetings, informal chats, planning for the day, skimming over the, doc, you know, the drafts that you want for the meetings you want to attend. All the way through, you know, lunch, there's a break, there's lunch, there's dinner. Sometimes there's a session after dinner. That's often the plenaries, for example. Um, and then you get together often, not required, get together with friends, colleagues, people you just met earlier in the day, to have after dinner, beer, drink, go out and socialize, or more likely go out and work. Um, it is a long day. Um, there are lots of things going on, um, and which brings me to the last bullet on this slide. <laughs> uh, remember to sleep. It's tiring. By the end of the week, as tired as people are of seeing that note well slide that Anshal started with, you'll see it at every single session as a reminder don't talk about private patents. Don't harass anybody. Be kind to your neighbors. That's the note well stuff. Um, they'll be even more tired, just you know, ready to, to crash out on the flights or driving on the way home, however you get home. <clears throat> A few key points about etiquette. Um, we want to be respectful and tolerant towards everybody. Um, the ITF started as a US contracted kind of thing. Um, it has since grown to be global. We are deliberately, for example, we meet once in the U.S. hemisphere, once in Europe in March, we were in Prague last March, and then once in Asia. So it's called 111 to get global participation. We try to make sure that people who can't attend in person are able to participate, such as streaming and um, YouTube videos. Also, we have something called Meet Echo, which is a great service where people can re participate remotely um, or um, just listen in remotely. So we've had remote presenters. We will present on a, often on a topic. They just can't make it to wherever the meeting happens to be. Um, talk and listen. Listening is obviously more important than talking. Uh, bringing new work to the ITF, we're trying to encourage this. Um, except maybe blockchain. But that's a joke. Uh, um, find the, the way to do it. If you have an idea that you think might be useful to help the internet work better, that's a very broad umbrella on purpose. Find some collaborators. Good way is, you know, well, this is kind of related working group, so let me go specialize that. Let me talk to the working group chair, see if they think it's interesting. Let me put a note near the schedules, paper schedules that are printed in the registration area, I guess down that way. Um, just get a bunch of people together. Post on the IETF 105 attendees list. Hey, I want to talk about you know, ways to use DNS to find my phone, whatever it's going to be. 
you hold, you propose a BOF, that's, then you're starting to get into more formal structure. There is a tutorial uh, from a couple meetings ago on how to bring new work to the ITF. Uh, the slides are available. There's also a video of that presentation. So just because there's things, you, it's a good, vibrant technical community, always eager to get involved in more areas. The way working groups work. Um, so the rooms will all be set up like this. They'll be, at the table will be the working group chairs. Their primary responsibility is time management. For example, I can tell you right now, we're gonna run long. <laughs> um, they, co they coordinate the speakers, have set up the agenda and all of the slides before the meeting. Um, the speakers stand here. In this case, there's a, a pink X to make sure that the video cameras are, you know, can record you if you step off camera, it's uncomfortable to the people remote and to the video. Um, there's a microphone, this is a smaller room, so there's one with the plenaries, there are six or eight. Um, a bigger meeting, such as TLS or DNS, um, will have two mics and you know the rooms will be almost half again or twice the size. If you want to say something, um, you, say, you come up to the mic and there's a line and the chair will say, you know, next to the line, you say your name. Rich Sauls, for identification, you say your company, your affiliation, Rich Sauls, Akamai, and I think, and then you say what your point is. If it's directly addressing a presenter, you know, I think that the extension you wrote there could be better improved by doing this, and that's it. Um, there are blue sheets which will go around. Um, those are done at the beginning of the meeting, collected at the end of the meeting, you write your name, um, your affiliation, those are scanned and posted and put online, so we have a record of all the attendees. Um, again, that's to ensure compliance with, you know, make sure there's no submarine patent work going on. We've been pretty good about that. Um, and also to help plan in the future meeting. Well, you know, the chairs, they go, oh, well, I've got 75 people who want to come to my next meeting, and we can look at the blue sheets and go, really, you only had 20 the last three, so maybe we'll give you a smaller room. Any kind of technical comment and questions are discussed while somebody is presenting, someone can come up to the mic and say, I have a clarifying question, I didn't understand what you just said about, and then details about what your confusion was. There is a jabber, um, and when we talk about the resources, Anchal will, will mention that, uh, instant messaging um, protocol, there's always a jabber room available, always a jabber room open for people to put in questions and comments, um, and also to keep track of what the slides are. With that, I'll turn it back over to Chantal, unless someone has a question on what I just talked about for this week. Great. Me? Okay. I'll keep going. I'll try to bring it in on time, which means I will talk even faster. Um, there is a person associated with the IETF called Eric, named Eric Rescorler. He's often called by his initials, Ecker, E-K-R, um, and his speaking style is the unit of speed for speaking. So people say, oh, I speak at half an ecker. Um, or I can speak at, you know, 0.9 of an ecker. Um, and he speaks really, really quickly and he's very technical and it's really hard sometimes to understand him. Don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> um, but anyhow, I will speak a little quicker to try to get us to finish close to time. The Secretariat are the key resources for this week. Um, the lovely people in blue shirts. I think they're all women. Um, they're the ones who handle the logistics. When we couldn't figure out how to get the slides projected here, right? It was somebody in a blue shirt who came up. Um, they handle the registration, they handle all the paperwork, the coordination of everything. They collect the blue sheets, scan them, you know, after the meeting and so on. Lovely people. We couldn't do this week without them. Um, also noticeable on Friday, as we're starting to take down everything, or they're starting to take down everything, they changed to Hawaiian shirts. Um, RFC editor, there are two tables out by the, um, uh, out by the, in the registration area. One is for the RFC editor. Those are the people who copy edit and actually do the publishing of the documents once they've been approved by the IESG, having left the working group, having been written by the working group authors. So that's the workflow, um, the RFC editor. Um, and then there's IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. 
That ensures, for example, that DNS uses port 53 and nobody else does, and HTTPS uses port 443 and nobody else does. There's a whole bunch of number spaces that have to be managed and assigned. Some of the numbers have names. Um, so IANA handles all of that. Um, other notable thing about these two organizations, outside of their being friendly and some are paid and some are volunteers, um, they always have candy out. So if you need a quick pick-me-up, hi, oh, I love the job you're doing. Um, Portia Wenz-Danley is our um, interim executive director. Uh, the IETF recently went through a slight reorganization for legal purposes to form a legal entity as opposed to being this sort of amorphous thing. Um, guiding through that has been Portia, who is the executive director, you know, signs the checks, keeps the lights on. The ombuds team. Uh, the IETF has a very strict no harassment policy. Nobody should feel harassed, bothered, constrained from talking, constrained from giving their technical opinion. Similarly, you should feel constrained from insulting the way somebody looks or commenting on them or saying, you know, I think you're really stupid. No, you can say that idea isn't good and here's why, but don't, you know, obviously we, we know how to act like mature adults towards each other. Um, a hard part of this is, as Anchal mentioned, many of these people have known each other for years or decades. So somebody will stand up, you know, Barry Lebo will stand up and go, you know, that's really dumb of you, Mike. Um, or Mike will say, that's a really stupid conclusion. You have to separate sometimes from the people. If they look middle-aged US with beards, it's, they've been around for a long time. I'm not middle-aged. <laughs> um, we have a team of ombudsmen. There's a policy about it, ombuds, the ombuds team. Um, there is an anti-harassment policy. There's pictures of the people involved. All three of them are very long time IETF participants. Um, if you see anything, and they have a particular sticker on, um, it's a green tag at the bottom of their, you know, neon green, go up and, and they will handle things appropriately and, and so on. On mailing lists, we have an organization called the Sergeant of Arms who has occasionally stepped in recently to try to make sure the discourse is civil, mature, and respectful. Who's who, um, working group chairs, those are the people, as I said, who will sit at the front and handle all of the things. They have a blue bat button like that on their badge. Sometimes, the other important thing is the smiley face. That's a sticker anybody can put on and it means I am willing to answer questions about the IETF. Obviously, Anchal and I are up here to help introduce you and we're willing to answer questions about the IETF. So, um, later this evening when there is the welcome reception for everyone, as you're wandering around with, you know, plate of hors d'oeuvres and snacks or whatever it is, and you, see, you have a question, look, you can look for somebody or you might recognize a familiar face. Um, do ask questions. We want people to come, learn, contribute, and not leave. <laughs> we want to keep you here. And it's not because we make money, right? And the, the way to, you can participate purely by joining mailing lists. And it doesn't cost anything except some time and, you know, mental work to join a mailing list. Some resources, uh, the Tao of the IETF, no disrespect intended to the Buddhists, that was name chosen deliberately, describes sort of the philosophical underpinnings of the organization. As Anshal talked about, we are unlike many other standards organizations. Uh, ISO ITU has one vote per country and the National Standards Organization, ANSI, BSI, I forget what, you know, and so on. They pick who their representatives are gonna be. Anybody who can join the mailing list, anybody gets an equal say. There's a specific newcomers page for this IETF, and there are also, the tutorials are all available. Not just the newcomers, but going back in time, as we said, how to, write, how to bring new work in, how to write an RFC, um, and so on. Get more meeting resources. All of these are available in the slides, which are on the data tracker. Next slide. Um, datatracker.ietf.org or, or dt.ietf.org. Um, this is the website that is, manages all of the document workflow. 
everything we do goes through the data tracker. So every working group, every team, which isn't quite a working group, as Karen mentioned at the beginning, the edu team, the people who do this, there's an RFC team who handle the defining the, the content, not the content, but defining the style and markup of the RFCs. They all have pages on here. Um, the most common thing I type is dt.ietf.org slash wg for working group slash and then what the working group's abbreviation is. The IETF is fond, perhaps overly fond, of having coming up with pronounceable English kind of pseudo words, right? Lurk, T, DNS op, well, not that, T, uh, quick, and so on. So, um, but that's a way to find, and from there, as you see on the right hand, ooh, that works. So you see on the right hand side over there, um, that is a working group page. Um, it shows all of, the doc, all of the drafts that are currently in progress, what their state is. Sometimes they're waiting for the area director and the ISG to move them forward. Um, tabs across the top, the overview of the, of the working group, the documents, the mailing lists. From the website, you can join any number of the, all of the IETF mailing lists are on datatracker.ietf.org. The tools is once you start to get involved in writing RFCs, then you may care about the tools, but for now, don't bother. Um, the data tracker is your friend or the bane of your existence. Remote participation. Um, attendance is not required. The only time attendance is required is if you want to participate in the nominating committee or be selected for the nominating committee. Um, we support remote attendance for at all of the working group sessions. Many of the other sessions, like I said, the, this tutorial, the, the side meetings are not remotely avail available, um, and we have a team meet echo. Those are the people, the fine folks on the meet echo team. Um, very friendly and helpful. There's always a video AV person in the back of the room handling the streaming, the mics, and so on. The network. Um, if you haven't logged into the IETF network yet, it is a thing of wonder. Um, people arrive about a week early. They bring in all sorts of, you know, working with the local telecom company, um, they bring in all sorts of extra capacity. Um, there are a number of IETF networks, depending on whether you do, you know, IPv6, IPv4, IPv6 and 4, 4 and 6, legacy, whatever it's going to be. Um, for all of the ones that require a name and password, the name and password are IETF. The purpose of that is not to be prevent people from getting access to the network. It's to make sure that we can do encryption, right? You log into the network and then you get keys and so on. We try to avoid, you know, there was a big RFC published around shortly after Edward Snowden that says surveillance is a threat um, that we need to mitigate, so we try to move everyone towards encryption. Um, funny story, when I was walking around, I guess down the underground shopping center things and someone goes, I don't know what this IETF hotel is or where it is, but boy, do they have great internet. Um, it really is amazing. Um, and it will run through Friday, through the end of the session. Um, there's a quiet space, there's a terminal room. It doesn't have terminals anymore, it just has wired power cords and wired ethernet. Um, there's a printer if you need to print your boarding pass or a last minute document. It's now out by the registration area so that you can just, there's a little sticky note on the printer that says how to access it. Um, <clears throat> the help desk is also out in the registration area. Jabber, we use XMPP, it's an IETF protocol. Um, there's a bunch of clients available here. I strongly encourage um, everyone to get Jabber <coughs> set up if they can. Um, you can. There's a number of free and open Jabber services, there's a list of them there. Um, and then every working group has a chat room. Um, working group name at jabber.ietf.org. Ask questions, that's where somebody, there'll be somebody called a Jabber scribe who will post, okay, literally this, the, the bulk of the slides, the bulk of the Jabber room, if there were one, for this session would be page 40, page 40. Rich at the mic, page 41, page 42, Anchal at the mic. 
and current signal me to leave. So, yeah. Okay. Um, above all, we, we all encourage you to have a good week and enjoy it. Um, these are slides from you know meetings, discussions. Um, one of the social events, I think it was Prague three years ago, had firework display, which was pretty amazing. Um, it's a fun time. It is um, definitely a expand your mind week. Um, and it is exhausting, not just because of the long hours, but even if you're not on and you're not presenting, you're not talking about it, um, you're engaged technically for 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Um, so have a lot of fun. Uh, there is a survey. We'd like everyone to participate and click on the survey. In particular, if you have suggestions, if, you know, next time Rich should wear long pants, whatever. We'll take any kind of feedback. Um, there is a, uh, it helps us improve. We gave a lot, we take a lot of that feedback and bring it back in to constantly evolve the slides every single time. Um, the edge team is a mailing list you can see right there. Um, and Thursday morning, there'll be a feedback session for newcomers to just, you know, tell us what you think. Okay. Um, if there's any questions, come to the mic or afterward come up to the table or Karen at the back of the room there. Um, but we're officially done. Thank you. Oh, hey, I, I, I forgot one thing. Let's do a practice hum just so you know what it's like. Here's the way it works. The chairs will say, okay, here's what the question is, and they will always be the, the possible, it's always multiple choice, the possible answers, and then the, the, the last part of the question is always don't know enough, can't decide yet. So the question is, the question will be, um, did you find this useful? And the, the choices are yes, no, or can't decide. So how many people found this useful? Please hum now. How many people did not find this useful? Please hum now. How many people can't decide yet? Okay, so that was pretty clear consensus that this was useful. We've done our job. Thank you.